buttons. Let's customize my iPhone today. First, we'll change the wallpaper. And as you can see, I sort of went on a little downloading spree. I saved some images for icons and wallpapers, and they're all really nice and pretty. But for my first ever customization, we'll be trying the one I made with Canva. We'll just set it as a wallpaper, adjust it a bit, and then set it as my home screen wallpaper. The next wallpaper is the one I made using Nietzsche, which is another app. This time, we'll set it as my lock screen. We'll just see it a bit, judge it a bit. <laughs> and I think so far, it's not so bad, I hope. I'm using the free version of Nietzsche, and it already has templates pre-installed, but it also saves your work or your past work as templates. Nietzsche actually has a lot of stickers, fonts, backgrounds, etc. Perfect for art news like me. And by the way, this is not sponsored. Long press the home screen and click the plus sign to add widgets. And right now, I'm using the Pinterest widget, which is very easy to use. You just hold the widget to edit it, and then you choose your visual board. I'm using my wallpaper visual board because it's very neat and simple. So I'm downloading another widget or app called Motivation. I actually downloaded this before but wasn't able to use it often so I'm just waiting for it to download again and tapping my fingers. It has a lot of motivational choo-choo so it's nice to see when I'm in a slump. You hold the home screen again and click the plus button on the upper left side and choose whichever size you want. But for this one, we're just going to choose the basic small one and fix it on the screen. By the way, these are also customizable. Now let's add a smart stack, which are actually widgets on widgets, I think. <laughs> Tap on the stack to edit the widgets in it and add the widgets that you like. And long press to remove the ones that you don't like. So I like stacking my habit and productivity apps because otherwise, if I don't, they seem a bit overwhelming. You can just remove those you don't want in the stack because they come pre-filled. I'm adding money manager, calendar, reminders, and habit, which is my habit tracker. The widget interface of these apps are both visually appealing and functional to me. <clears throat> Sorry. A word of warning, you have to be a bit careful with smart stacks though because they feel like fidget spinners, so a bit obsessed with it. I love Habit a lot because it has such a user-friendly design and even if it's like that, it really works and it's really colorful too. Like wow, I think the colors match surprisingly well. We will customize the next page with more widgets. I'm sorry. At this time, a photo album from Top Widgets. This was recommended to me by my friend. You have a maximum of 10 photos to display per album and I think that's pretty cool considering it's free. We go back to touching and holding the home area until the apps jiggle jiggle. <laughs> what? Just choose the small box for the top widgets widget and then tap on it to edit and choose your desired folder. <sighs> that was hard to say. Next, we will use color widgets. I'm sorry, I really had fun downloading all these widgets. Don't worry, they're not really big on the memory, I think. We're just using the codes widget, but it also has other widgets like countdowns, weather, calendar, music, etc, etc. Next, we will change the icons of my most used apps and we will use the shortcuts function since we cannot directly change the app icons. Click the plus sign on the top right to add a shortcut. And we are making a Spotify shortcut. Click open app on the next action suggestion and choose Spotify. Wow. Click the blue button on the upper right side. And then change the icon to suit your taste. Honestly, it was so hard to stop myself from clicking on every recommendation from the keywords that I used, but I will try my best to find them and link them all in the description box. You can now remove the original app from your home screen. And we will just repeat the same process for all the other apps, and this might take some time if you have a lot of apps you want to make shortcuts for. I also found a nice insect drawing for Instagram. <laughs> So you click the add button to send your shortcut directly to your home screen and afterwards you can delete the apps this might be daunting but also satisfying Ta-da! a visual harmony 
the last widget for this page, just this page, is Dayleo. This is just a way to track my mood and journal when long form tires me out. The different moods on the interface actually makes me click on them more. It's like they're saying, hey girl, why don't you update? You can quickly log your activity here and it's a hassle-free exercise. Now let's change the icons on the dock. We're using shortcuts again, and it's the same process as the ones we used with our most used apps. We're making shortcuts for Messages, Phone, Telegram, and Safari. I've been putting off doing shortcuts because I thought it was hard. I thought it was a lengthy process, and it is. But the only troublesome thing is that you have to do this step so many times, but other than that, it's actually really fun, especially the saving icons part. <laughs> Hoarding pictures to save as icons. I saw a drawing of a paper crane and thought it would be a nice telegram icon. Because remember, in telegram, the icon is a paper plane. Huh. I forgot to put this, but you can turn off notifs for your shortcuts so they don't pop up every time. Almost into the telegram, but it's okay because it's cloud-based, so you can just reinstall it. <laughs> Doing this part was satisfying because you just had to drag all the icons to their proper place. The third page is my most used Google Apps page, and I'm not going to change the icons because I like the yellow icons. We're using the Google Calendar to fill this space above. I'm also adding one of my favorite widgets, the day before. It's a countdown app that you can customize and put photos to display. I like how Google Photos refresh regularly to show a different memory. But I'm blurring this one because my sister's here and I'm now deleting all the app folders for less clutter. I'm also adding in the Forest app for Pomodoro for the last page. I'm reviewing everything first before I move on to the last widget which is also from Top Widgets. A cool looking shortcut bar. You can also customize the icons to suit your taste. I honestly just chose to put this in because I love the vertical layout and I think it looks really unique. I changed the last app to Instagram since I use that more often. I'm adding the vertical widgets. And then I'm choosing the medium layout because that's the perfect one and then selecting the widget design that I made a while ago. I relocated the Google Photos and replaced it with this widget instead, and I'm now trying to open the apps. So far, it works pretty well and fast, so good. I'm actually not very content with my home screen wallpaper. I think it's nice, but then I tried a few other ones that I liked and installed, and then I searched for new ones too. It just kept going on. I didn't even search for high quality photos. That was like how lazy I was, but also very determined to find the right one. I really like this one. It reminded me of NCT Dream's Hello Future, so I'll probably use it more often in the future. But for now, we'll try the minimalist background for the first time. And I was really surprised because it actually looks cohesive. This last layout Chuchui will change the icon beside the clock meant for focus settings. Tap on the plus sign to create a new focus profile and then name your custom profile however you like. And then choose the icon that you'd like to see on your screen often so I chose the earth where we live in. <laughs> Since this is in the focus setting, I'm adding little to no restrictions. And now we just try it on. And ta da! Hello, world! There's one thing I like using too, and this is the tap or touch functions at the back of the phone. Just look for the touch settings. I just type in Spotlight Search. And then scroll furthest down to back tap. My double tap is to activate my camera while the triple tap is for screenshots. 
I think I'm pretty content with my first layout. I didn't expect it to come as cohesively as it did, but it's, in my opinion, in my opinion, it's okay. Just okay. I'm putting on the case that I often used before. This was the first case that I used for my iPhone and a beaded handle since my phone tends to fall on my face every time I'm on the bed. Anyway, that is all friends. Thank you for watching this video and I hope to see you next time. Please subscribe too. Bye bye!